Hi, I'm Tom Waite from GunDogTrainer.com. Today we're going to discuss proper collar conditioning of your dog. Uh, electronics are a big part of training, especially a kind of calm, collected way for the owner and the dog to become one and bond together in the training process. We can do a lot with electronics and training that used to take a lot more physical man-to-dog or hand-on-hand -hand correction. Today we have Hope, she's a seven month old English pointer puppy um, that realistically has had none of this work done with her. A lot of the dogs you're gonna see in our, our training videos are gonna be dogs that you as dog owners or you know pet owners are gonna be able to relate to. Dogs that haven't been trained for periods of time, dogs that are in green, as green and fresh as the dogs that you will be working with. This video is gonna be part of our 15 minute trainer or 15 minute trainer video series on collar conditioning your dog. Later on we'll discuss particulars of collars, but today we're going to walk through and talk about the electronics and training and how to do it properly and correctly to have a good positive effect on your dog. First and foremost to start off with, how you put the collar on your dog makes a large difference. I like to take a dog and hold him in this kind of position where I'm in charge and I can take the dog and slide the collar on. Electronics have to be snug on the dog. They don't have to be tight where the dog you know, has a hard time breathing, but if they're loose in the contact points, do not touch the dog. You will not get any sort of effect from the collar. Now, we're going to work on the here command as we're collar conditioning. Part of the reason we're going to do that is because it is a command. Since she's been a puppy, she's at least heard and acknowledges. So when working on conditioning the dog with the collar, I want to use a command that Obviously, I'm going to use throughout her life, throughout training, throughout hunting, throughout even those eight months of the year when the hunting season isn't open. So we're going to start off by giving her an opportunity to kind of move around freely and do what she's going to do. One thing I need to note also is we start on a low level. The collar has to be on the lowest setting possible before we move, a, we move ahead to find out where this dog is at. On this particular collar, the levels go from one to six. We're going to start on a level one, and we're going to use continuous stimulation. Continuous stimulation, to be clarified, is the stimulation we give to the dog. They get the stimulation or the pressure for a period of time from when we, we press the button until we let off the button. Momentary stimulation, to clarify that, the dog, no matter how long we hold the button, just gets a very quick stimulation and a quick response. We want to teach these dogs to turn off the pressure. Now the pressure in this case is going to be the stimulation, low level stimulation. Now notice I'll say low level throughout this video, but every dog is different. Every dog has a different means and a different way of, of dealing with and associating pressure and stimulation. This particular dog we may find out is on a level one or a level two. You may find out a different dog, and we're gonna bring another dog out in a minute, is on a three or four. By starting at the bottom, meaning one, the lowest setting, we're going to give ourselves the opportunity to see how the dog responds and reacts to what we're doing. By using that continuous stimulation, we're also teaching the dog that they are, in essence, turning off the pressure. By the dog turning off the pressure, it doesn't have an effect, a negative effect, on the relationship and the bond between me and the animal. Because, in, in essence, this puppy here doesn't know that I'm giving her the stimulation, but she knows that if she can turn off that pressure of the stimulation by doing what I'm asking of her. One other thing I want to note also is the old adage of shock collar is not what we're using here. These collars are not meant to shock the dog. They're meant for stimulation and used correctly, that's what we're going to give, low level stimulation. Now we're going to go ahead and start with Cope here. Give the dog an opportunity to get away from you. Kind of walk her around, let her think it's everyday life. We're going to give her the stimulation, and then we're going to give her the command at the same time. Once she makes a move to come towards me, I'll release this pressure. I use the term here, some are going to use come. Here is what we're going to be using today. Hope here. Stimulate, she gets the pressure, but it's obviously not enough. Now we're going to go to a level two. Let the dog move around. That a girl. Hope here. She's getting the pressure. Her ears drop. Her tail drops here. Good. 
we want the dog to understand that this is when we call her here, this is the, the, the safety zone. Once she's within these parameters in the zone around us, there is no longer any pressure stimulation. Again, we let her go, okay. Use the command to release her. Okay, and this term is what we're using. Here we go again, we'll get her away from us. Hope, here, stimulate, good. Here, 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 here. One thing to note is never move towards your dog. Here, good. Come here, you, good girl. Now the dog at this point has never had this done to her before, so she's not quite sure what the pressure means. But she's learning when she comes within my safety zone, the pressure is eliminated. Now if you watch the dog, she's still happy-go-lucky, still a puppy, still a dog. We're not changing any of that. We know that by doing this this way, this dog is being collar conditioned correctly. In essence, she's going to do this and, and, and enjoy it as compared to have a negative effect from the collar. We'll let her move around again. Stimulate her here, here. Good girl. She comes in, she stands here, under control and ready for the next thing we're gonna work her on. Now, by me not elevating my voice and hollering and, and screaming at this dog, she doesn't think that this is a negative thing, it's a bad thing. She looks at it as, okay, I'm getting pressure. I turn the pressure off by coming to him. Come on, girl. Now you know after short order when the dog understands the concept of the game because what happens is she'll start hanging around you, she'll start staying by me, she's going to try to eliminate pressure by just not doing anything. What that tells you, people go, oh the dog is, is collar shy, she's collar wise, no. She's just trying to figure out what's acceptable and what is accepted by what we're doing. We're going to do it again. Give her the command and stimulate. When she turns to come to me, release the pressure. Hope, here, stimulate. Good girl, here. Now notice I praise her on the way in. Here she leaves. Hope, here, here, good girl. Now the pressure is off when the dog is here in my safety zone. Good girl. Once she's in the safety zone, life is good. Okay, good girl. Let's go, hunt him up. Here she moves away, obviously not phased by the collar. But now, getting to the end of the rope, she figures, well, maybe I'm, I'm, I shouldn't be doing anything here and waiting for what command he's gonna give me. Here we go again. Hope, here, here, good girl, here, good, here, good puppy, good girl. By giving the dog a little praise on the way in and a praise when she comes to you, you're settling and soothing the dog to say, hey, this is where I'm supposed to be. And obviously the, the antics of a puppy jumping, you don't want them on you either. So the best thing to do is keep them off of you, pet them when they're settled and pet them when they're still. Then she understands, or the, whatever the dog happens to be, she understands now that's what's acceptable. Okay, come on. We let her move around. Keep the slack out, and here we go. Hope here. Good girl. Notice the difference in response. She's happy. She wants to come to you. She's excited to do it. The collar doesn't mean a bad thing, but what it means to her is it's a means of her turning off the pressure. This dog has a very soft disposition, meaning if I had to physically go drag her in, after a few instances, we would, we would lose this dog's intensity. We would lose her desire to come to us. Here we go again. Hope here, stimulate. Now she's trying to avoid here, good. And what she's learning is that every time she bounces off and gets that pressure, that she can turn it off by coming to me. Obviously with most dogs and most people, if the dog comes to you when you call it, and sits and stays for a retriever or a spaniel, or stops for a pointer, that that is half the battle right, right there. Come on girl. Now see, now she's trying to crawl in my pocket here. She wants to be part of this, but she doesn't want to get any pressure. So what you do is instead of making a big issue out of it, you just push the dog off as though nothing has happened. Now here we go again. Hope, here, here, good girl. Notice the tail's still wagging and she's still happy. Life is good, but now she just learned that, hey, I turn off the pressure by, by doing this for him. 
now we're going to switch dogs and we're going to switch to a retriever you know we want to give people the view that we're going to we're going to have all different kinds of dogs on these videos we're going to give people the opportunity to see that it's not just retrievers it's not just spaniels it's not just pointers but we're going to show you a little bit of everything a lot of things overlap in training there will be things that are different which we'll touch on later on but now we're going to switch to a young labrador female and we're going to go through the same thing two different kinds of dogs two different kinds of personalities but the big thing with it is the same techniques are going to carry over to get the same results all right now our our next dog here we're going to work on is a young labrador female who's a little bit out of control but awfully clingy she she takes the typically any kind of pressures that we've started in training but she's she's pretty handy and wants to hang around me so one thing I want to reiterate too is the value of this check cord or a long rope or a long lead. What this allows me to do and it allows you when working the dogs to do is it allows you to keep the dog under certain control. With the collar work you want to make sure you start off so the dog understands it. By having this long line on there I can keep her within a certain proximity of me in which case I know that I always can get the correction I need. If you take her off the lead, which comes further down the line, and you let her run around, and she at this point isn't collar conditioned correctly, we're not going to have any means to teach the dog what we want. This way it's under control and a very essential piece of equipment to start with. It doesn't matter if it's a rope, it's a leash, it's a, a clothesline, whatever it happens to be, just a means to control the dog up to a certain distance. Okay, here we go, we let her move around, come on girl, in theory we let her move around. Good girl. Now with this dog, I'm going to have a different problem. I'm going to have a problem of keeping her away from me so I can, I can work her with the collar. The other dog had no problem with that. This one wants to be with me all the time. Gem here. Stimulate here, here, here. Good. Sit. Good girl. Good dog. But notice one thing, I'm not hollering, I'm not raising my voice, I'm giving the dog the opportunity to, to do what's acceptable, and that's turn off the pressure. The jumping part, what this is, is this is the means of these dogs to try to get into my personal space. They're trying to eliminate any of the pressure by becoming one in their mind with me. That a girl, okay, okay, come on. Good girl. Good dog. Good girl. Okay, let's go. Here we go. Jem here. Stimulate. She gets the pressure here. Good girl. Here. Good. Now that just shows you the dog had a little bit of a, of a bark, a little bit of a squeak. She's running on a level one, which is the lowest we have. The other dog was on a level two, just to show the difference every dog's a little different. This dog who's a little more wild but a little more out of control one would think is going to need a higher level of stimulation whereas the reality is she's lower. Here we go again. Gem here, stimulate, here, here, good girl, here, good. That stimulation is given until the dog physically makes a move to come back to you. Once the dog comes back, I will praise the dog and say, good girl, don't go overboard on your praise because you'll take the dog out of a work mode. But at least let them know subtly that this is what they're supposed to be doing. Come on, you. Here we go again. Now she's going to play the game. Here, stimulate. Here, good. Here. Notice, comes into that safety zone and eliminates the pressure. By taking that 15 minutes to collar condition your dog for two or three days or four days, depending on the dog from I would say three days to a week would be a better estimate, you're going to take the opportunities to keep your dog on track with your training, what you expect from the dog, and what the collar means. By shorting it and putting the collar on the dog and going out and not uh, conditioning the dog and not taking the dog you know to through these steps you're going to ask for training behavioral problems later on and the dog's going to have a negative effect with the collar on this point this dog doesn't understand it as anything to do with the collar 
she's just learning that there's a way to turn off the pressure. Come on, girl. That a girl. Good dog. Here we go again. Gem, here. Stimulate. Good girl. Tail comes up. She wags. She's happy. She's fine. Now, by my by by teaching these dogs this, I, I will go back to what I'd said earlier. We're teaching the dog that they're the one in charge. They're the one turning off the pressure. We'll do a few more until the dog does it correctly, and then it's time to move on. One thing to stress is when you're working and training your dog, do not, do not, and I'll say it again, do more than the dog can physically or mentally take a, during a training session. The 15 minute trainer is the ideal amount of time, and it's the ideal thing to work on. Give yourself 15 minutes, give the dog 15 minutes, end on a good note. Come on girl, let's go. Jam here, stimulate, here. Good, sit, good. Now, am I concerned about where the dog sits, how the dog sits, all those things right now? Absolutely not. Remember, we're collar conditioning the dog. We're teaching the dog what the pressure and what the stimulation means so we can more or less use our off-lead trainer, meaning the collar, to help us with our problems and our training issues as time goes on. Okay, come on, come on you. Good girl. Now if you notice the dog is starting to get to the point where she's kind of shorting out on us. We want to do a few more, we want to end on a good note, and we want to be done with this particular thing. Okay, come on girl. That a girl. Once the dog's attention span has run out, and it depends on the dog, it depends on the age, it depends on a lot of things, you have to use that to your advantage and say, okay, one more good opportunity is what I need before I quit. Come on, girl. Let's go. Come on. Now, if you notice, she's grabbing the lead, grabbing things, trying to do anything to eliminate any kind of pressure and get away with what she can. Come on. Here we go. Jim, here. Stimulate. Good. Good. Here again, she's sitting down. She's settled and calm. That's when I give the dog the praise. One more time. Jem here. Stimulate. Good girl. Wait till she settles down. Now pet her. Reaffirm that you're still in charge, but these are the parameters we've set. I'm Tom Waite from GunDogTrainer.com, and that's proper collar conditioning of your dog. 15 minutes a day is what's going to make the difference in training. In conclusion, Collar conditioning for these dogs is essentially important for training further on. What we've shown you here is the proper way to collar condition your dog to help you move ahead in further training situations. Proper collar conditioning, as seen in, in our video here, is the way to start and build a foundation for any sort of dog training that you're going to do with your dog from here through the future. Thank you for watching. I'm Tom Waite from GunDogTrainer.com. Go to our website at gundogtrainer.com for further 15-minute videos of our 15-minute video series. In these 15-minute videos, we guarantee, if you follow them, that any time from a two to six-week time frame, you're going to accomplish those goals that are set in these videos to further you and your dog in the training process. The 15-minute series is set up, as the name says, to allow 15 minutes of your day for the everyday person with the everyday life to take that 15 minutes and move ahead with your dog in training. Our videos go from the beginning to the end of the training process. The time frame it takes is dependent on each dog, but follow us through the training series, follow our 15 minute videos, we guarantee results.